<laughs> All right, uh, I'm sorry. First order of business, since I called the meeting to order at four o'clock, is approval of the minutes from the last PNG meeting. All in favor? Aye. Okay, policy work. Let's dive right into it. All right, so first order of business. There was a request at the board table to try to figure out how to track changes. Yes. And the first order of business is actually to retain Kim as an employee of the district. Um, and uh, in order to make sure that she and I are not going nuts while we're trying to do this. In all honesty, we struggled with how to make this work. So we have a proposal that we would like your feedback on to see if it not only meets your needs, but perhaps meets the needs of the rest of the board. So um, I am looking at the 100s here, for instance. So what we have is I took that main chart, pull this up, so the one that says where everything lives now and mm -hmm. where it used to live, that's in front. Um, then behind that, you find the summary of the 100s. And then you start to move into the 100 policies. So here's 100, here's 101. Well, 100 isn't based on anything that we have now because it's just by itself. Now you get to 101. If you go back to the front, you'll see that um, admin guideline 100 is now in code number 101. So now if you wanted to come in and look at this, you would look at these two side by side so that you could see this is being replaced by this. So that's code 100. If you're in 102, that has 102. If you're 102E1, that has nothing. 102E2 is actually the old 1041, and so on as you go through here. So now here's a good example. So this is this is 102E4 and 102E3. They are actually replacing Appendix 6. So then you'd have Appendix 6 behind it. They're also replacing parts of the superintendent directions. So we ran off the whole superintendent direction so you can see how it nests together in case there's anything you think we missed that's in here. Um, and so we did that for literally everything. So you can see the three binders here, 100, 200s, 300s. And the idea behind that is that it's now, if you will, kind of an examination copy of the transition from the old to the new. And what I would like to propose that we do, providing you all remain my friends, is that the three of us, the four of us at a minimum, commit to going down and going through and doing the side by side in each one of these so that we can look at it and see it. Um, I'm gonna put a signature page in the front because I'm also asking members of the ESC admin team to do the same thing, but they'll offer it up to the rest of the board I know Lori had said she wanted to go through and look at it. Um, this was the best way that we could figure out for you as board members to see the old and see the new because there's a lot of things that aren't a one-to-one -one transference. There's some stuff that we have that we'd adopted for various reasons. It was legal at one point in time and never got updated, et cetera that isn't in the new one, but then, like I said, you'll also find things that are in the new board policies that we did not have a policy, we didn't have a guideline, we didn't have a superintendent direction, there wasn't anything in our entire policy manual that matched what the state recommends that we have, so you'll see some things that are just literally standalone because there's nothing that it ties to in ours. But that was the best way that we could figure out for you to be able to see what's new, what's old, and how it fits together. So first I'd like to ask just for your feedback on that, if, if it looks like it's a reasonable process for doing it, and if so, if, if that's something that, and I know it would slow our process down a little bit, but that you would be able to find time to do, say over the next four weeks, is to come in and sit down and rifle through these. I know you've already read through the new ones, You've looked at this piece, and so you've looked at them electronically. But I also do understand Lori's issue of that's just too much, too many web pages open and too much stuff to try to see the, the, the correlation to. So we thought this would at least put it down in paper. So, I don't know, thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's... I know it's kind of old school. It, it, you know, it makes you kind of have to be present to do it, right? Yeah, but that's the problem. I think it would be uh, feasible if you had basically a very similar written instruction, uh, uh, kind of what you just said. Like yeah. If the new sheet's standalone, that means it's new. Sure. Right? That, yep. that means that. Yep. Uh, so if you don't see anything after that, then you can, should yep. consider that as all new. Absolutely. And, you know, and maybe, because uh, it looks like you're already doing some type of color coding yes. system. Yes, so really putting down some kind of operational directions for it. So this is what it is, this is how you do it. That's a great idea. Because otherwise, I mean, you're going to, it's just more paper without some sort of guidance. Yeah, what, yeah. Is, what is it? What am I stopping? I mean, <laughs> but with the new guidelines um, that we're looking to edit the wording in those, that's easy to track. Absolutely. Yes, that, absolutely. We, can. Okay. that yeah. we absolutely can. That's done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to make sure it's on the record. Yep. That's Yeah, I mean, if that to me that makes sense, it's probably like Steve said, the only way we can have it done that makes sense, then we'll have to commit to coming in and doing that side by side comparison and make sure it looks the same as what we were looking at online. And one thing that, that uh, and, and we'd said, you know, this is kind of hard to do and we weren't sure how to do it. So I just committed to go, coming in and sitting down and going through the entire thing again. Uh -huh. um, is that I can do some notation on the orange stuff, so that you know, okay, if this is if this is the educational philosophy of the district and this is the educational philosophy, okay, that doesn't really require any any note taking on it. But when you get back to one that's like uh, this one, so. 102 E4 replaces superintendent directions. Well, what in superintendent directions does it replace? And Kim and I had talked about that and said, oh my goodness, if we try to highlight this electronically, that's just an enormous amount of work. But there, I could easily write some notes in here so that whoever's coming after me would be able to say, okay, what am I really looking for in here? When I, because this is the whole superintendent directions pages. So is there something specific in here that I should be looking for? So if I go through this first, I can help narrow it down for you, which ought to, ought to speed up the process for you. And I know you, you folks are looking at it a little bit more closely than say a, a Phil or a Lori or a Janet might be. So that way, if they want to come in and sit and look through this, that might help them go through it a little bit quicker. Okay. So I'm definitely willing to commit to sitting down and doing that. Yeah. So we've done that. That's the royal we. Kim has done that okay. <laughs> for ones, twos, and nines. Thank you, Kim. Um, we're actually trying to go through, <laughs> we've got multiple binders for each one of the policy ones, so we're going through and now this is going to be our only binder. So if we find any sticky notes or notes in here, <clears throat> we'll transfer that to here so you'll be able to see that too. Um, and I, I think I can hopefully uh, get through the three of these before the end of the week so that at any point starting next Monday that you or any other board members want to come in and sit and look at these, um, they will be, I will have signed off on the signature sheet on the front page, you'll be able to see mine on there, and then I'll have made any notes that are appropriate uh, in, inside. So you said starting Monday, possibly? I think starting Monday, I think we can do that. I might yeah. make Kim help me go through it. Absolutely. So. So we have that, like I said, we have that for ones, twos, and nines. Um, we uh, I, we ran into a little bit of a roadblock with uh, the rest, of, just because the team has been a little uh, preoccupied with budget and a couple other things, staffing and some other things. But Craig is working really hard on sevens and eights. He's got lots of sticky notes in there, so that might take longer to revise than we thought. Amy and Matt have taken an initial reading at fives and sixes but need to come back at it. And uh, Chase is looking at the threes and fours. So I would presume that kind of based on the schedule we're on right now, I would think that we'd be able to get through the ones, twos, and nines completely by the time we get to our April meeting. We'd all have been able to read through it. Hopefully some of our other board members have been able to read through it. I'll get some members of the admin team that will have been able to read through it. So I think when we come to the table in April, that we'll be able to have a good full board discussion about any of the content that's in there and any changes that we're looking at for that. And then I'm hoping that by the time we get to that point, 
think the threes and fours are probably our next two reasonable sets to get to, and that's our HR ones. Um, and we'll be in the same position with a color-coded binder for threes and fours. Um, we'll be able to look at that together uh, when we're in April, um, and then we'll be able to share that out with the board as a whole, so that they'll be able to come back together in May and talk about that. Fives and sixes are Amy and Matt. Um, I'm hoping when we're back together in May then for our uh, P&G meeting that uh, uh, we'll be able to review the fives and sixes together and then put them out for review for the rest of the board. In June, they'll be able to come back at the board meeting and talk about that at our P&G meeting. Then we'll have the sevens and eights. So ideally then, and I know it's a little bit behind schedule, but when we hit that first meeting in July, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we will have had conversation here at P&G, review by the full board and members of the admin team, discussion at the board table on each of those sections, and that gives us a little bit of space before the start of the new school year to have been through all the policies, get all the questions answered, do any red line changes that we see that need to be done, um, and have those ready for adoption um, as we roll into the new school year. So that would be the timeline I'd look at for that. Reasonable? Yeah. I'm still a little over ambitious maybe, but no, I, I think, think I think it's reasonable. With some heavy lifting from all yeah, of us, we I can I think we can do it. Tackle it and try at least. Yep. Kim, you want to go through the red line changes that we had? And I think other than that, I think we should be I think all set. Good. They're very well few. and just the one suggestion from board member President Gotwin about making oh. sure that our educational philosophies nobody else sent in suggestions or edits yep. or concerns yep and so i've got the old one okay. and the new one in there together so you'll be able to see them sorry but thank you for reminding me while she's looking that up um she did uh she had talked about that conflict of interest form yes. she was unable to access that through um uh through a uh, act but we were able to find some other examples. Um, in particular, I know there was one off of um, board source that she liked, so I sent her back a note. I think it's the sample number five that she sent out was the one that she liked. So I've got an email back to her. If that's the one she does like, I'll be able to take that and put it on uh, a district form and have that available for us. And, and uh, when we get it, I'll send it out to you so you can take a look at it. Um, it, uh, she liked the concrete nature of the questions that were in there about um, if you ever had any family members you know, like sold property or bought property from the district, if you ever done any business with the district, and you're required to go through an initial on each of those. So I thought that was, I, I understood her specificity. She was worried some of the other forms that she looked at were kind of. Um, Why don't you tell us what your conflict is? Yeah, exactly. Or, or do you think you have one? Yeah. Um, as opposed to have you ever. <coughs> She, she thought that the specificity would take any ambiguity away from people filling it out. And it, I thought it was also more straightforward because you just look at it and say, no, I haven't done that. Check, 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 sign. So, and I've done a, I don't know about any of you, but I've done a lot of conflict of interest forms. I do one every year for the foundation, for the JA board, for the ICAD board. Yeah. Um, and and uh, they're like you just described. Do you think you have any? If you do, write them down. Um, That's they, the University of Iowa. Okay. And, and I can understand her point about, but what does that mean? So that one that said, you know, do you have any business dealings? Have you bought or sold any property? Do you sit on any boards that, of organizations that do business with, with your entity? So I thought that uh, that specificity was a, a lot more concrete and probably a lot less open to interpretation or people making mistakes. So. I remember, I have a copy of it somewhere, but uh, <clears throat> when, uh, was filing uh, for 501c3 for must have been Garner's uh, PTO. Yep. Uh, at the time, they required all nonprofits to have a conflict of interest that all officers had to sign. Yep. Wow. That was part of the, uh, I don't think it is anymore. Um, but I can't even remember, I got mine from somewhere. It might have even been like a from the IRS website or something that has one. Um, but it's basically a one page sheet, and it's, it's kind of similar to. Um, one of the examples I think that Jan said that was basically you know, initial on each of the lines that you understand yep. what all those pieces mean. It was, it was the policy, it wasn't yep. a disclosure form. I'll look and see if they've got something else. <coughs> see if I can find that. Yeah. 
So um, I can, uh, like I said, I can get something like that drafted up and dropped onto okay. our form so you can take a look at that and I'll have that for the next time we meet. Maybe I'll just send it out in the meantime too just so you can take a look at it and tell me if it looks like it passes Sounds muster. Good. Sorry, I said I asked you to do something and I interrupted myself in there. Oh, that's all right. So, <coughs> red line changes. Within the online one that's posted? Yeah. So the 100s was adding the Say Something campaign. It's 104 G1 that Paul had suggested, mm -hmm. which made sense. So that has been added. The 200 okay. is 209.6, and that's um, the review cycle of the policies, which you guys had talked about oh, yes. three or four years. Yeah. Um, we modified it for four years, and then Steve went through and bunched the series so they make sense as we go through them. So what we did was, um, and we think we heard you correctly, that one of the things that you had mentioned was um, that uh, if it was four years, then it would match your term on the board, so that during your term on the board, you would have, had, you would have gone through all of the policies um, during your term on the board. So. Um, and we kind of clustered them the way that we're working through them right now. And again, just uh, in terms of uh, uh, content, so um, you can see sevens and eights are non-instructional operations, business service, building sites, five and six is student ed program, threes and fours is admin employees, so that's kind of HR stuff, and then one, twos, and nines are the district, the board, and school community relations, and we thought those were the same kind of clusters that we're using to review them we thought would be good to go through because they're so interrelated. I knew there was another one. I couldn't remember which one that was. 206.2, yep. The vice president. Yeah. The board will elect a new president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that just matches what we currently yep. do. Right. And then the other one we had was um, 903.2, community resource persons and volunteers. We struck the community resource persons and, so it's just titled volunteers. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Wait, what? I thought about that when I was the, doing the it, and then I didn't do it. All the numbers, it oh. Still says yep. Oh, sure. Resource person. No. Yeah. Thank you. Good catch. Very good catch. Those those were the only three, right? Yeah. I think those yeah. were the. There were four, yeah. So the Say Something campaign, the two oh, and the 200 Sorry, series. Say Something campaign is the 104 G1 that we just added to oh, the yeah. yep. bullying and harassment. Oh, let me make sure I put that in the index. Yep, I did. Yeah, it was a total of four. Yep. So there's not a ton there from our meeting last time, but hopefully we have a review framework for you and we made those four red line changes that you shared with us last time. So I know we spent a lot of time going page by page last time. Is there anything else that we needed to do today? I'm trying to remember what all people threw out there. I know that the, our educational philosophy was a big one, like yeah. just making sure that's good. And then, uh, that was it? I mean, uh, I know there was a lot of talk about we want to make sure this stuff comes up later. But they, I was like, yeah, those are other member policies. And that's what, yeah, that's right. what got hard. To, I right. think the conflict of interest other? or, no, what was the policy that? Yeah, a lot of that, you're talking about things Director Hemingway. Hemingway brought up. So a lot of the stuff that he talked about is things that you're going to find. For instance, a lot of the, the he said, yeah, that talks about the board members, but what about the what about is the threes and fours? Because the threes and fours are the employee policies, and that's both for certified and classified, so they run in parallel. So when you look at the, the, the threes and uh, when you look at the, the actual uh, uh, 
titles in there, you're going to see that there's a section for certified and a section for classified. Right. And in many cases, the same policy is repeated twice as you go through there. The good news is when you're reading, you're going to say, oh, I know this one already because I've read it. Because it's the same for both of them, but it treats them separately because it has them all lumped and certified and all lumped and, and classified. So you'll see a conflict of interest in there. You'll see nepotism in there because it, it's nested in there as an employee policy. Obviously, board members are not employees of the district, and that's why it's separate here. And I know that was probably confusing for him because um, I think he was looking to see it in one place, but you're really going to see it in multiple places, places because of the way our employees are set up. Yeah. yeah come up with a, a disclosure form that should be the same one every exactly time. right yeah and that's we've done that in a couple other places where you'll see a form shows up in a couple of different places and I think that's okay and I know IASB when you ask them it's because it's pertinent to that particular policy and that employee group and so it goes there and if it's the same somewhere else then you just repeat it somewhere else oh uh, the other piece that had some discussion, um, and I don't know if you all want to discuss it, because we did, was the um, issue or perceived issue going against first, oh, uh, yeah. the first, first Amendment, Amendment right? and Thank freedom you. of the... And I believe that's in 200s. It is. It's and under the last one of two or four. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's the <coughs> code of ethics. So, I, and this is straight from ISAB. This, this is this is verbatim out of IASB. The logic behind it is that. It's okay to disagree about ideas, but we should not be disagreeable while we're doing it. And uh, if you look at the, the norms that the board has adopted through our retreat process, they look very similar to this. Obviously, it, it takes this idea and breaks it out more. I mean, if you look at our norms, we've got more items that reflect this idea. Uh, but I think the idea is really just to, to maintain civil discourse among your board members, both at the table and away from the table. You know, I kind of look at it. Smith, that line. Yeah. Like, you just change that board members will maintain some discourse. Yeah. And now the board's like, yeah. You could easily do that. Say that. Yep. I mean, I, as, as a point of, you know, <laughs> it's a point of contention, right? Because people see it as meaning whatever it means to them. In the end, you can't write. A, a bullet point like that that changes human behavior. Yeah. And people are going to be however they're going to be. Yeah. Um, so it could be there or not be there. I don't know that it changes anything. Well, you, we talked about it earlier. I would be okay if it, just, it wasn't in there. It's in board norms. But yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. My um, ears are stuffed. I'm sorry. I would be okay with it not even being in there. We just, it's in our board norms. I mean, it's not. The, okay. the one thing I would say, I know, I know. The one thing I would say, which is interesting, if, if you look at what's in here, because I went back and looked at it, we'll listen, we'll be motivated, we'll recognize, we'll abide, we'll expect, we'll remain, we'll recognize, we'll abide, we'll recognize, we'll provide, we'll respect, we'll be trustees, we'll abide, um, we'll recognize, we'll commit, we'll express, and then this is the first one that's a will not. So, you know, to Sean's point, if it said board members will maintain civil discourse in and out of the board meeting, you know, that, that's a, an affirmative statement. Because this is the only negative statement in that list of statements. Everything else is the things that you shall do that are positively oriented. And this one is the only one that is written in such a way that has a negative connotation. The rest of them are all, you know, will commit to their own learning, express honest and thoughtful opinions. So we'll maintain civil discourse in and out of the board meeting, period. So if you wanted to have it in there, you know, Paul's point of in or out, I'm okay with either one. To Sean's point, if you want to have it be affirmative, then I think maintaining civil discourse is a pretty straightforward expectation. We expect that of community commenters. I think you expect that from the admin team while they're in there. So. I think that, I think that goes to the, of the line. I, it right? does. 
if it's just yep. have you know civil conversation. Yep. Because if you actually by verbatim, right, you can't say anything bad. I mean, we'd all be in trouble. Right. Like every board member would at some point say something bad about another board member. Right. And whether they intentionally meant it or not, right? But if they're at least having a good, honest conversation and yes, they can see it sometimes. I, I think that's the intent of it is to keep everybody on the level playing field. Yeah. I I'm fine. I mean we can change it to a uh, will statement, but we can I can see Paul's point of just taking it out. We can try striking it and see how people react to that. I'm fine with that. Can you because we do have I wanna say our board norms sort of says that anyway. <laughs> Which is crazy. But sure. Okay. I'm not uh, it's not anything serious that I think we should spend a whole lot of time on arguing over. So we'll redline that so when we include yeah. it in here, 200s, get to the right binder, you'll have a redline version of it in there so it'll show that, that uh, phrase blocked out. When we come back to the board to talk about that um, at that uh, uh, March. 26th, is that when we're on? Yeah, yeah. March 26th. March 26th. Is when we, we can share that that's, um, that's been uh, red light. Great. And was there anything else from the board table? Did, I didn't. I didn't. Most of it was looking into other policy members that we hadn't got to. Yet. Yeah, because I can't re I don't <coughs> think anybody else said anything. So the rest I, think all that, cast for. I think if they were going to make any comments, I think they'd have to go through the process of Reading. looking at old and new and saying, well, this is weird here. Yeah. And now they can, starting Monday. Oh, I'm sorry. Lori did send me something. She didn't send anything. She just was asked, did we get anything with notations of what's new and what's changed? So I will send out, once I've got everything ready to go, I will send out a note to the board and I'm going to include, I'm going to drop a, I'll put a sheet in here, but I'll also then cut and paste that into the email that says that this is the process. Um, and I'll have that out by the end of the week for everybody. Okay. I would go into the index sheet and oh, highlight in yellow yeah. or Ooh. highlight in red. These items have changed. Yeah. yeah, sure. That, would be good. that might be easier than just having another sheet of. Yeah. yeah that'd be great. Then they could just click on it. for us to go through the binders yet. Well, we'll wait to find out. You can start going through You let us know what you're Okay, is there anything else? <laughs> can I take the bait? <laughs> I'm 
I'm not causing a sign. Paul? Nope. All right. That was surprisingly brief. Steve. And painless. I know. So, is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Oh, no, we have to set the next one. Thank you, Paul. I'm always, like, looking to leave. <laughs> what, uh, April 2nd? April 2nd. Does that work for and 4, 4.30, or would you like to say, wait? I was going to make a request. Okay. I think it was. Hold on a second to make sure. Yes. If, if we could go early, that would be greatly appreciated. I have a whole bunch of boys' soccer games on Tuesday nights. Okay. So if we can go early, I can go see my kiddo play soccer. Like four early? Four, four would be awesome if you guys can make four. Early. Yeah. Thank you. All right. April 2nd at 4 p.m. All right. All right. Awesome. Next meeting is set. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, Paul. Second. All right. All in favor, yay. We're done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.